All right, you guys, welcome back. So um, today we're just going to be talking about strings. So strings are one of the most important data types, but they're not actually a primitive built-in data type to Java, just as we've talked about with um, other languages this year. These are actually a collection of characters, right? Characters are a primitive data type. So a single letter or exclamation point or even a number as a, as a string, that, that character by itself is a primitive data type, right? We could write that in our code as character letter equals single quotes F, right? So that's single character that's built in. So a string is just a collection of those. So it's not ever a primitive built in part. However, it's so commonly used that it is in the string class is included in the Java programming. We use it all the time. In fact, anytime we scan in information, we usually store it as a string first, and then we parse through it to kind of sort and sift and say, okay, well, what is this separated by commas, by spaces? Are these numerical values? Are they decimals or whole numbers? Are they dates? And so, um, but we take it in as a string first, and then we sort through it called parsing. Okay, so a couple important notes um, is you can't use the equals equals operator here. Okay, uh, that's only for primitive data types, so integers, character, float, things like that. Um, instead, we have to use a method or a function to compare two strings, and it goes letter by letter, character by character. It checks the length, it checks that every character matches, and then it says yes, these are exactly the same slot by slot. Um, and then the variable itself is actually pointing at a memory location. So if you say equals equals, you're actually saying, so if I create two strings, if I create string um, word one equals happy, <clears throat> and then I create another string. And remember, we can create the second one with uh, the new keyword. Uh, this is something I've mentioned in the past, but I'm going to go over right now. So if we create... Um, two things like this, what you're actually asking when you say is word one equal equal to word two is you're saying, are these two pointing at the same spot in memory? So is word one and word two pointing at the same thing in memory on the computer? Because this is actually a memory address it's pointing at. And so you can use the equals equals operator, it just doesn't behave like you want, because you could have two things that say happy, but were actually declared separately in memory and would report false. So this one would actually return true. Um, there's a good article at the bottom right here that you could read um, about the difference in declaring strings using this default just equals declaration and using the new keyword. Um, and this website does a really good job of explaining those differences and why in this case it will return true. But if we did a uh, new string happy um, and now checked, it would actually return false. Um, and so we'll use instead a method to check that they're equal. Um, and the last thing is every time we create something of the string class, we actually have an object. So we're instantiating the string class and getting an object of that type. Um, again, we'll talk more and more about what instantiation is, what an object is later, okay? So let's just jump into playing around with strings. So first I'm going to say uh, class, we'll say plain strings, okay? And then I'm going to have to make our public static void main. So let's go public static void main. Again, four arguments in there. We say we can take in some arguments. It's a collection of strings and we'll call them args, okay? All right, so we're ready to go. Uh, so first off, let's just declare a word, okay? Let's say we have a string called word one. Let's say it's equal to happy. Uh, the only default operation we have with string, so um, that's built into the language, is you could always say word one equals, and you could take the old word one, which was happy, and you could use the plus operator to add an E. Okay, so now it's happy E. Okay, now let's just go ahead and check that that works. So system dot out dot print line, um, we'll just print um, word one, whoops. Okay, I'm going to save this. Notice this is new. So when I go control S, it'll ask me where I want to save it. So on desktop now, I'm organizing all my stuff into a workspace folder. Um, by date, and this is going to be the same as in AP Computer Science. So today is April 11th, so I am putting it in 0411. 
I'm giving it the same name as the class, so capital letter plain strings. I've selected it's a .java file, and I save it. Okay, it's blue up here. I'm ready to go. I right-click, open in CMD. I Java compile the full name, plain strings.java, and then I Java plain strings to run it. Okay, and there we go. We get the happy E. So the plus operator does work. It concatenates two strings. You could even add on other data types like plus, and this is an integer one. Right, but if you take a string and you add any other data type, it converts it into a string and then concatenates it. So if I go ahead and save this, um, string plus pretty much any data type gets converted to a string and then concatenated. So I'm going to save this, I'm going to recompile, and then I'm going to go Java plain strings and see it added the uh, one at the end of happy there. Okay, so that was the one primitive operator we have, um, but now the string class actually has a lot of methods. And if you just Google um, Java string class or common methods, whatever you want, you can go to the actual documentation on the Oracle website. Oracle's the ones that um, made Java and maintain it with upgrades. Um, and we've got all these different mer um, methods, right? So uh, you put in an integer to care at, it returns a character and it says returns the character value at the specified index. In other words, um, if I go, uh, let's see, character letter is equal to, and from word one, I could go dot and I use this method right here. And I would say what character is at slot one. Okay. And then I could down here print, uh, slot one of, and then I'm going to join word one, uh, is, and then I'm going to put that letter. Okay, let's go ahead and save that. Make sure I got all my plus. Oh, what the heck here? Word one doesn't need a plus. So we've got that plus the variable plus. Yeah, that looks good. So I'm going to save it. Go back over here. Recompile. Let's run it as a slot one of happy is a because remember it starts the indexing at zero. So this would be slot zero, a is slot one, and then two, three, so on, so on. Okay, so that's just one example. Now something I want to show you about that is let's just simplify this a little bit. Okay, let's get rid of this line. Notice that because I've now created an object of the string class, it now has access to all of its methods and you call on that method by saying the object, which is the variable, dot, and then what function or method of the string class do you want to enact, right? So notice I'm using the variable for the word, and then dot saying use its ability, use its method, use its function, right? So some other really common ones here is equals. So I could say, um, so I can leave this as just an example. I'm going to scroll out a tiny bit. Okay, and now let's go down a little bit more and we'll say uh, Boolean, uh, we'll say is equal is the name of our Boolean and we'll say is word one dot and the method is equals. So we'll go dot equals and I'm going to put in capital H happy. So this should return false, right? Lowercase happy and capital happy are not the same. And then I'm going to go system dot out dot print line and I'll say is word one equal to happy um, colon and then let's join that with our is equal variable okay I'm going to save that I'm going to go back over here recompile with our changes run it um, and false now notice though that I could always do equals ignore case. So that's going to ignore uppercase, lowercase. It's just going to say are the characters the same. So as a beginner programmer, this might be a really easy way to handle like capital yes and lowercase yes without, you know, is it equal to this or is it equal to this? So this can save you some time. So instead of equals, I'm going to type equals ignore case. We'll save this. Um, and then I'm going to go back over here recompile and notice that now it's true right so word one even though it had a lowercase h 
Um, and this has a capital H, they are equal. So now another thing I wanna check here is what if I create another string called word two, okay? And this one, um, I'm gonna use the new keyword. I'm gonna say I create a new string. I'm gonna give it a starting value of happy. And I just wanna show you um, two things. So Boolean, I'm gonna say uh, there's a default equal, and then I'm gonna make another one down here that is a Boolean that using method equal, okay? So over here, what I could do is I could just check um, is word one equal equal to word two, okay? So I'll put this in parentheses, I don't need to, but just for clarity, I'm asking a true or false question. Is word one equal to word two? So I mean, the values are the same, but remember I'm using the primitive operator here. So this is saying, are these two things stored in the same place in memory? Are they pointing at the same memory location? Which is not really what we want. Instead, what we want is, we want to say is word whoops word one dot equals and we don't have to put in a uh, you know string that we're creating right here we can actually put in a variable we can say is it equal to word two okay and down here we'll say um, default whoops default equals and then we'll do another one system Oh, I'm slow typing this morning. Okay, print line um, using method. Okay, so let's save that. Let's go over here and go up, 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 down. Um, and notice the default equals returns false because these are actually stored, even though it's the exact same string, it's stored in two different places in memory because right here the new keyword is saying create a new thing in memory. So not looking at the strings that already exist, trying to save on memory allocation, um, as would happen if I just typed um, it this way, it would look at what strings already exist and it would say, ah, that one already exists. I'm just gonna point at that and save memory. Um, instead, I'm saying create a new one in memory. So the equals equals, no, they're not stored in the same spot in memory. And that's why we don't use um, that one to compare strings. Instead, we'll use equals or equals ignore case. Um, I already showed you a uh, character at another one we could do is let's do a uh, string word three and let's go happy -ness, all funky with capitals and lowercase and that just looks a little crazy and so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to say let's create an, no let's not even create a new string let's just say word three is now equal to and we take the old word three and we go dot to lowercase. Um, there's nothing going into this. We're just calling on this method and it converts it to lowercase letters. Um, I'm enacting this method on itself, right? I'm saying from this string object, call on its method to lowercase. That converts it to lowercase. And then I need to save it somewhere. And so I save it here. And now what I could do is I could say, um, System dot out dot print. I'm not going to go to a new line. Old word three was word three, right? Plus, and I'll put a little dot 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 there. Um, actually, you know what? Let's just end the line there. I like that one. Okay, let's put a little print line. Okay, and then let's do the exact same thing, except we'll do the new version. So system dot out dot print line, new word three is and we've now updated the variable we changed it so let's see what happens there we'll go over i saved it with control s i recompile and there was the old one and there's the new one so this is just some examples uh, one that you're going to use a ton when we start looping through strings and checking letters um, is the length so you'll often use uh, word three dot length again there's no input there you're just saying count the length of this object so it just goes from word three and it just counts like this one two it's not like c where there's the uh, null character at the end to signify the end of a string it just counts the actual letters so it just goes through one two three four and returns the number of letters in the string okay you guys i hope that was a quick little overview of strings in java i hope you're getting a little more comfortable with the new language um Next, we're going to start jumping into uh, what we're talking about with strings, objects, 
uh, instantiating your own objects, which is really when you start to see the beauty of Java and how the higher level organization really helps you create larger programs and starts to just kind of get beautiful, in my opinion. All right, you guys.